doing right now is opening the document you have already downloaded called comma splice and run on. And it looks just like this document up here. Actually, let me unfreeze it for you. Looks just like this document up here. As a reminder, quiz tomorrow in my class for your novel. And you will have a worksheet that I'll give you at the end of the hour for homework today. So today, we're going to talk about some of the things that make it difficult for a reader to enjoy your story. We've been talking about adding in detail. We've been talking about looking at tense, whether it's in past or present. We've been talking about elongating a moment so your reader feels some tension about what's going to happen. Now we're going to look at things that I'm starting to notice as I read through your stories, and they're getting more developed. And those things that I'm starting to notice is that sometimes it's hard for me to understand what's being said, because as a reader, I don't know where to pause. I don't know where your new ideas, where one idea ends and a new idea starts. Or I don't know who's talking or who's saying what, because I can't tell what's happening. Because sometimes we have sentences that are too far connected and combined. So today we're going to be looking at what a run-on sentence is and what a comma splice is. How many of you guys have heard the term run-on before? That one's probably familiar to you. And this is a really important thing because a lot of us have these problems. About 90% of, of my students have these problems somewhere in their right. Yeah. A run-on is when you have a sentence and a sentence and a sentence, but no punctuation between them. You just have another word or a space. So I'm going to have you draw what it looks like when you have a run-on sentence with a squiggly. So if this squiggly represents a sentence, a run-on looks like this. One right next to it, and one right next to it, and one right next to it, and I can't tell which ones are which. I'm going to have you write this up here so that you know what this looks like. So a run-on has a representation that looks like this. And sometimes it's just two or three next to each other. Sometimes it's four or five or twelve. The other one that I see is called a comma splice. And this one is probably not familiar to you. You probably know what a comma is. But a comma splice is when you have a sentence, and then a comma, and a sentence, and a comma, and a sentence. Well, Vinci, that's a great idea. Please write, that's one of the techniques that we're going to use today, is periods, which you already know, but we're going to learn some new ones. She writes you this. So I'm going to have, make sure that you have these on there right now. Make sure that you have this representation of what it looks like. A run-on, sentence after sentence after sentence, no punctuation. A comma splice is sentence, comma, sentence, comma, sentence. And here's the thing. Some people think that a sentence can be divided, or two sentences can be connected <coughs> with a comma. But they can't. <coughs> so the one that you already know, like Vinci already told us, is that a period. That's the one we know for sure. Yeah, for sure. But we're going to learn two new ones today also. So some of us have run-ons. Put a frowny face. We don't want any run-ons. Some of us have comma splices. Put a frowny face. We don't want any comma splices. I want you to think about a comma splice like this. If I took two things like this, and I put some glue on them, just regular white glue like that back there, like the colofia or whatever, the, is that what it's called here, colofia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, if I try to glue these together, one strip of glue, one strip of glue, and I let it dry, what would happen when it dried? It would stick forever. These well, things? No, it would just fall and fall would... apart. Yeah. Why? Because the glue is not strong enough. Okay. That's what I want you to think about with a comma. When you have two sentences, the glue of a comma is not strong enough to hold them. Okay? Oh, it's it's got to use hot glue or, or cement or something. Which is a period. Which is a period. Super glue. No. Or parentheses. What did you say? Mint? Cement. Oh, cement. Oh, or gum that you just ate. Okay. So, I hear you guys recognizing, I'm waiting, I hear you guys recognizing 
that there are some other things besides a period or besides like super glue that would work. Yeah. Cement would work, sticky gum, maybe um, super glue or hot glue. And I'm going to teach you guys some of those other techniques besides a period that will work today. But before we do that, I need you to know what these two look like. Because I might say, hey, Vale, you have a run on. And I want her to know what that means. Or I might say, hey, what's that? You have a comma slice. Or I might say, hey, Miss O'Toole, you have a run on and a comma slice in your writing. Ooh. And I want her to know which one is which. All right? Okay? So I want you guys to think about this today. I'm going to ask you, of these sentences down here in part two, which ones are run ons and which ones are comma slices? All of these in here are one or the other. So I will tell you that. Which means all of those have sentences that are next to each other that are not connected well. And I'm going to ask you to identify those first. So first, let's look at part two. Part two. So in number one, I'm going to wait until we're all looking at our iPads. On number one, it says, John didn't show up for his math test. He didn't notify the teacher. In there, there are two sentences next to each other where one ends and another begins that are matched. I'd like for you to put a box where one ends and the other begins. Put a box around that. What are the two words where one ends and the other begins? See what you can find in there. And before you do that, just on your own, I want us to try reading it out loud. Pause. Everybody put your hands on your head. Hands on your head. Hands on your head. Hands on your head. Okay. One of the techniques to being able to hear your story, how other people hear it in their head, is to read it out loud. Because when we read it in our heads silently, we read it either like we wrote it or how we want to hear it. How many of you guys have done this before? If you write a sentence and you like miss a word, but you don't even notice that word, like and or something, is missing because you just read it the same way you want to read it over and over. Raise your hand if you've done that before. Okay, so as we do these today, I'm going to have you practice reading each one out loud. Even if you're like, no, 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 it. I want you to practice that technique because it only works, or it, it works for other people because they don't hear it like you hear it in your head. So whether, whether it's my writing or your writing, we're going to practice it. So, I'm going to say go, and I'm going to ask you to read this out loud to yourself. Not to me, just read it. Uh, vocalize, use your vocal cords for this. When you find the part where two sentences are meeting, put a box around it. Three, two, one. Read it out loud. Go. Everybody on your own, but at your own pace. I should hear lots of voices. Say your voice. Do your voice. John did it. Yeah. Did you read it out loud, Yeah. Did you notice where one starts and the other begins? Yeah. Put a box around it. You naturally probably call it, right? All around the two words. So I don't know the same question. Uh -huh. So put it around the last word and then the first word. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. If you're listening, put your hand on your head so I know you're ready. Okay, so who found where these should be boxed? Hold on, you tell me? Between? Yes. Good. Did you put a box like this, guys? If you didn't, this is what your box should look like. Okay? So this is where you can see. This is where one ends and the other begins. Looking at where the sentences meet. Do we have a run-on, sentences next to sentences, or do we have a comma splice, comma separation? 
separating our sentences. This is a run on, so mark R O over here. Mark R O over here. Let's look at number two. He had missed the test. Oh, how come I'm the only one reading out loud? I wanna. I told you. Do your own. Read it out loud. See if you can find where to put your box between the two sentences. I should hear everybody's voice go. Everybody's voice on your own. Did you read it? Did you read it? I didn't hear you. Okay, try now. He he had missed the test because I didn't hear you. Did you read it? He had missed the test because his mother had been inserted. Did you hear what he said? He also he missed. He also missed. Did you hear where the two divide naturally? I didn't. Yeah. Okay, put a box around. If you didn't take your time to study, John had better be trusted. Should they move on if they finish? Or no? I'm gonna have to do one more. Okay. All right. Let's pause for a second. He had missed the test because his mother had been in a serious car accident. He also missed raising class. Where does our box go, Francisco? Accident and he. Accident and he. Raise your hands. You got it right. I got it right, John. So accident and he. Here's where we see the mash, the two sentences coming together. Is it a run-on or a comma splice? Run-on. Run-on. I want you to do number three. Now, do this at your table with each other. Do number three. See if you can figure out the trick that I'm trying to do. At your tables, go. Number three. Number three. So let's talk about number three. I heard some of you figuring out how I was trying to trick you. Um, can anybody, first of all, tell me where the two sentences meet? Uh, I think. Classmates Best and most. Classmates and most? Oh, study and John. Sounds so different. I know, Class I mean. Classmates and John. Classmates, classmates and most. Oh. Now, right here, this is where they're meeting. Is yeah. it a run on our comments place? more than one comma for that, but this comma is, as you're saying, yeah. correct. It's okay. It's not, it's not like at the end of a sentence. That's right. This is where our problem is. And where our problem is has no, no punctuation. It is a run on. I want you guys to stop where you are and I want you to do number six, seven, Ten. No, just six, just six and nine. Let's do six and six nine. Six and nine. Six and nine, guys. Six and nine. At your tables with your partner. See if you can put your box. I should hear you speaking out loud. I should hear you reading these out loud. Everybody reads. I'll know that you're ready because your hand will be up here. I'll know that you're ready because your hand will be up here. Let's look at number six and number nine. She wasn't sure what to do. A solution finally occurred to her. Where's our box go here? Francisco. Uh, and do. And, <coughs> and A? Yeah. Okay. So this is where our problem is. Do we have a comma place or a run on here? Comma place. Okay, because they're being connected by a comma, which doesn't work. It's like that. Hold up for you. It doesn't work. Okay? So what about number nine? The teacher felt badly about the situation. She decided to make her testing and policy clear on her website. Carmen. Um, well, I think that the, like, the box would go um, the situation is she, uh -huh. and it would be a comma slide. But like, what I'm thinking is a comma still works in the sentence. Like, it still yeah. sounds okay, doesn't it? Because you need a pause there. Yeah. But it doesn't work grammatically. Because uh, you really it have. It doesn't stick as good. Correct. Yeah. Um, because you have two sentences. So I'm going to talk to you guys about what you can do here with the comma. So I told you guys already that a comma is too weak to hold things by itself when you have a sentence and a sentence. If you have a transition phrase, okay, therefore, however, those are small. They work. Sentences don't. 
So I'm gonna teach you guys in just a second what you need to make this. And you're right that you do need a pause there, but it's not a problem, okay? All right, so I wanna show you guys number, let's wait. Let's go on to the next one. Yeah, let's wait. So we didn't do all of these. We're gonna come back to some in just a second. So I'm gonna ask you guys now to go down to part three. Part three. Okay. So Vinci told us a little bit ago. Did. You did. Okay. That one thing we could do to separate these sentences appropriately was to use a period. A period. A period. So I'm gonna have you guys write this in. So this is the one you should already know. A period. And in our stoplight box over here, I'm going to have you draw a period in the top one. Because that's the one you're probably going to use the most. So you're going to use your period and draw it right in that box as well. I want you to have the word and the symbol. The word and the symbol. So there's another one that you can also use. And that word is a semicolon. Semicolon. So the symbol for it looks like this. A dot and a comma together. This is a semicolon. A semicolon. So here's what I want to talk about with this piece. <coughs> How many of you guys, and be honest, are like, Miss, I know exactly what this semicolon is, and I know how to use it, and I use it all the time. Raise your hand. Miss Yates, they might need a second okay. to finish up writing, just I don't want to okay. miss the instruction. Okay. So probably most of us don't know what this is, so I'll pause before we talk about it. Thanks. Semicolon. Because when I asked that, only a few people raised their hand. So make sure you've got a period there. Just draw a period. And draw the semicolon up there, see? Semicolon. Yeah, so that's, um, to the that's point, okay, and like, that was the most 
play climax music that you might have ever heard in my life. <laughs> but now you'll remember it, right? Because it was the most anti climax. What's the third one, Miss? Oh, you oh, the third one! Do you really want to know? Okay! Miss, is this clip? If you're listening, do this. Erupts. Erupts. Some of us are going to tell aren't listening because we're not doing this yet.
wasn't able to study, so I probably won't. Wait, wouldn't yet be like four? They're, the ones in blue are not as commonly used, at least at your level right now. What if we knew yet? And you can use it. No, yet, but. I'm just telling you, the, these are the red ones that you will use. So, the big question is, what is the symbol? It looks like this. Comma, wow. Fanboys. And you have to put the comma in there with it. Why comma? Because, think about it like this example I showed you earlier. <coughs> you guys told me that glue, regular glue, wasn't going to hold this. That's a comma, right? A regular comma isn't going to hold two sentences together. It doesn't work. But, what if I put glue with More glue. gum with hot glue and put it all on here? Then it's going to be... Then it might work, right? It's stronger. It's going to be really strong and... Okay. It goes. That's the same as doing a comma fanboys. If you use a coordinating conjunction, which means a comma with one of these words, it works the same as a period or a semicolon. Why don't we say fanboys? Because it's an easy way for us to remember what words go with this. So if I say, what are your fanboys options? You can go for, door, and, fan. No, nor, book, boy. But, so you can remember all of those things. Okay, it's an easy way for us to remember. The fancy term is coordinating conjunction. And it's another way to help your sentences be more complex. Yep. So that's the same thing. People were asking, like, Miss, how can we, if we know how to use periods, how can we have to use these? Well, <coughs> what happens if you don't learn pronouns, such as he and she? What if I say, Vale went to the store. Vale bought, Vale brought, <coughs> bought three things. Vale's mom told her she had to put two back. Vale went to the checkout. Vale took money out of her. It's really repetitive. It's really repetitive. And so we say, Vale went to the store. She bought two things. Her then. mom said, then I can say Vale again. Vale put three back, or put one back. So if you mix it up, it becomes less repetitive. This is a way to make your sentences more complex and enjoyable for your reader and not really repetitive. So, here's what has to happen. You notice these two blanks over here, right? These are your tools. If you have a sentence next to a sentence, write those in. Because there are times when commas work. Have you heard of transitions? Yep. We talked about them recently. <coughs> Such as, for example, or therefore, or even though, oh my God. those would take a comma. Am I because you don't have a sentence next to a sentence. You have a sentence and a phrase, or a phrase at the beginning of a sentence. When you have two sentences, just like the examples, back to back, these are your three options. This is how you can do it. So now I'm going to ask you guys to look and see and practice using them. Can I change it? Okay. So I'm going to have you go down to section three, please. I'm sorry, section four, please. And I know that you have the picture already, but the more you draw it, the better you will remember. So I'm going to ask you in this corner over here to zoom in, and I'm going to ask you to draw. Draw. Do not copy and paste from above. Draw with your finger. Your stoplight. What goes at the top of our stoplight? A period. A period. What goes in the middle? Uh, uh, comma, no, uh, 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 a dot, a dot semi comma. comma. A dot comma. Semi -comma. It's called a? <laughs> semi <-colon. laughs> I, What's it called in Spanish? Somebody told me it's called something like dot comma. Semi colon. No, no. Semi colon. Semi -colon. Somebody told me that it was like a, it was called like punto coma or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, punto coma. Wait, wait, wait. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll ask the Spanish teachers. And the last one is, what goes at the bottom? Comma fanboys. Comma fanboys. <laughs> Write the whole thing in. But don't forget what has to be on both sides. What has to be on both sides, folks? Sentence. Please write your word. Sentence. Sentence. Eat the heart.
No, she just oh. said don't do that. Sentence. I said he's simply guilty. Copy and paste it. Right, guilty. Sentence. Your guilty. brain will remember better. That's, this is modal, motor muscle memory. Okay. So here we are on part four. And you have your reminder up here on yours as well. We've done some of these sentences already. So let's look at number one. John didn't show up for his math test. He didn't notify the teacher. You guys told me already that's where the problem was. Yeah. We said already on the first part, using the same sentences, that it was a run-on. Yeah. Now we have to correct it or fix it. I'm going to ask you to fix it any of these three ways. Any of these three ways. You get to choose right now. Fix it. Correct it. Write it in. Zoom in if you need to. You choose. You have three options. You have your original and two new ways. Miss, you have just one. You get to because I'm always just one with this. Ha ha ha! This is those for number ten. Some of them it doesn't. Some of them it doesn't. We'll talk about this one. We'll see what we can find. So let's talk. How many of you guys chose to use a period? Which one you Okay, if you use a period, what do you have to do with the word he? Capitalize, Capitalize it. it. How many of you guys used a semicolon? Me. Did you leave he uncapitalized? No. If you use a semicolon, it's okay. You leave it uncapitalized. No, non-capitalized. Non-capitalized, yep. How many of you guys used a comma fanboys? Well, do you need to say fanboys? You have to say comma fanboys. In fact, Let's practice because I want you to know that the fanboys for, for, or, oh my gosh, I go it. Like for, a and, nor, <laughs> but, or, yet, so, cannot be used by themselves. They always have to go with a comma. Comma, if you're using it to combine sentences. Miss, it sounds like a band and the, and the band. Comma band band band. Yes. Then fanboys. Yeah. Okay. So I want you guys to say it really fast together. So remember that the comma Damn. and the fanboy word always always goes together. So repeat after me. Come on, fanboys. Come on, fanboys. Do it again. 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 Do it again. Okay. I was if you're listening to this. Four and more. If you're listening to this. But so I can tell some of us aren't listening because we're not doing this yet. Yeah. Okay, we're going to try it one more time. We're going to try it one more time to remember that the comma and the fanboys always go connected to each other. So repeat after me. Come on, fanboys. Come on, fanboys. Come on, fanboys. Come on, fanboys. Okay, stop. Come on. So if we're going to use a comma fanboys here, we have for and nor but or yet so. John didn't show up for his math test, but... So, and, 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 comma, and works. I don't think the other one's working. But and works. Comma four. Not by you itself. Did. It's got comma to be. Comma four, you didn't notify the teacher. Comma and. Come in. I know. Okay. Comma, comma four, he didn't Bro. notify the teacher. No, that's but that's not the reason that he didn't. You're, You're thinking because. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't always work. It's, a, it's a hard to use that one. But because. Yeah. Keep trying on that one. If you're listening, say I. 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 Let's do number two. We already found out on number two that he had missed the, dip, the test because his mother had been in a serious car accident. You guys told me this is where the two connected and then it was a run on. I'm going to tell you right now, use one of your three methods to make it work. Use one of your three methods to make it work. So raise your hand. How many of you guys used a period to connect this one? Hands up. Okay. Did you capitalize the next letter? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Who used a semicolon? Oh my God, it's so Did you leave it uncapitalized? <coughs> Did anybody use a comma fanboys? I used a comma. What, what do you think would work for that? Oh, wait. No, none of that. Who's a semicolon? No. So there's no if you do this one, probably comma and is really the only one that would work for this. Okay? I'm going to ask you guys to do number... Five. Ooh. We're going to skip to five. Let's start it together. So fix it. Let's look at number five. We didn't do this one last time. So we have to figure out where one sentence ends and the next begins. So our technique was to first read it out loud. 
so that we can hear it. I'm going to ask you to read number five out loud, everybody at their own pace. Put a box where you think one sentence ends and the next begins. And then we'll move on from there. Everybody on your own pace, go! <laughs> All right, so I went around to your tables and I heard some of you guys trying to figure this one out. Some of us have got stumped on it, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to try to trick you. Some of you guys have already figured it out. Number five says she hated student complaints. She could ignore the complaint or she could do something to fix it. Where does the first sentence stop and the next one begin? Kennedy, you want a shot? You're right. So I want you to look at this right here. We actually have three short sentences here. What do you notice about the second half? She could ignore the complaints or she could do something to fix it. Vale. There are both options. There are both options in here. So let's pause for a second. Here, we have a, not just a fanboy, a come fanboy. Come fanboy. <laughs> Connecting this sentence and this sentence. But there's a comma connecting the first sentence and the second sentence. Can you connect a sentence with a comma? No. <coughs> so my question to you is, what do we do right here between complaints and she? Carmen. Full stop and a capital S. Ah, why don't we put why don't we put a fanboys in there? Because already has one. Because there already is one. Okay. So here's what I will tell you. Always, this one's okay. Your semicolon and your comma fanboy. You can only have one per sentence. Okay? So you can't have two comma fanboys in here. You could technically have a semicolon, because there's not one in the sentence yet, or a period. But you can't have comma fanboys, comma fanboys, comma fanboy, and you can't have semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. So since there's already a comma fanboys, what are our options here? What are we left with? <coughs> we already have a fanboys. We can't use it. What are our options? Full stop or? Okay, you get to decide what you want to put in there. Do you want to put in a period, as we suggested with Carmen's statement, and capitalize the S? Or do you want to put in a semicolon? You get to choose. Look down and see what you chose right now, because I'm going to ask you to raise your hands. Did you, did you fix it? Did you fix it? How many of you guys did a period with a capital S? How many of you guys did a semicolon? Okay. I'd like to now look at number... Oh wait, we didn't answer this blank over here, did we? Oh my god! We didn't do it! Comma Between twice. complaints and she, which one was it? Comma twice. How twice. do you know? Because, because there's two commas in a sentence. This is impossible. There can be more than more commas in a sentence. I mean... It's the connection of two sentences. I, I knew that. <coughs> yeah, yeah, that one. I want you guys to look at number six, and then we're going to do number ten. Number six. She wasn't sure about what to do if a solution finally occurred to her. You need to read it out loud in your own voice. Put your box where the two sentences meet. Go! Put your box where the two sentences meet. All right, so I just saw at the tables that you guys had figured out that it was do and a. Do we have a run on our comma splice here? Yeah, because the comma's trying to connect it. It's not going to work. It's going to break. What are our options here? Um, fanboys. Okay, so how could we fix it with a fanboys? What could you say about it? She wasn't sure what to do, comma, but a solution finally occurred to her. So but works. What else would work? So? So? Yes. I think that one might be a little tricky. There's another one. Anybody want to take a guess? What yes. I know, wait, wait. So I don't really know if this is the right one, but you, I guess you could say she wasn't sure what to do yet. A solution finally. Yet might work. The other one that would be there is and, guys. I said it. The, the trick is that you have to don't say it out loud and sound it out. If you're not sure, if you worry about it in English, then choose one of the other options. 
You get to decide that, if you're ready for this option or not. I want us to do number 10 together. Let's do number 10. So number 10 says, I don't like cheese, but my sister, but my loves, sister it. loves it. Wow. You have two <coughs> sentences in there. But it is a oh, run -on. Run -on. What do you yeah. think? Oh, wait, hold on. Let's see if this is gone. Okay, go ahead. So, it's like, I already have comic template. It's already a drawing. Mm -hmm. Because you just have to put a comic button next to cheese and butt. Because butt is the word. This is the one you were talking about earlier, right? Cool. So, we have a sentence here. And we have a sentence here. And Kennedy well, has noticed... That there is already a fanboy, but what's the problem? No comma fanboy. There's no comma. There's no comma fanboy. There's a fanboy, but it doesn't have the comma. Remember, fanboys cannot go by themselves. Commas cannot go by themselves, but together they work. How many of you guys read Freak the Mighty? Me. It's like Freak the Mighty. One doesn't always work by itself. The other one doesn't always work by itself, but together. It's free for my okay? That's like comma fanboys, okay? If you read that book, I know half of us did. <coughs> so here, in order to make it work, you can put a comma. Comma fanboys. Because the, the fanboys are already there. I want to ask you to do one thing. I want you to figure out right now, if I told you, don't use a comma fanboy. How would you fix this? If I said, don't use that one. Use a semicolon or a period. At your tables, figure out what you would have to do to this sentence. At your tables, figure out what you would have to do, because you can't just stick it in there. Okay, if you're listening to this. You know what's going on? Not only, but some of us are totally wrong. Don't do a comma fanboy. What would you have to do? Ale, you want to try? Either a but and add a period or a, a semicolon. Yeah, if I said that, you take away the but and you could put period, capital M, or semicolon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? So I'm going to ask you guys right now to do this. Let's see, let's leave that there. To do this for your homework. I'm going to give you this paper because it's easier for me to grade punctuation and corrections on paper. But it's small. When I give this to you, the top part we already did. Put an X over the top part. In addition to that, I'm going to ask you at the bottom to draw your stoplight with the word sentence on each side. So now this is the third time you've drawn it today at least on this paper. So as soon as you get it, as soon as you get it, you have two things to do. Cross out number four and draw your stoplight. So you should be crossing out number four because we've already done that part. We're just going to do number five, which is why your homework says part five. At the bottom or on the side or at the top, wherever you want, I should see you drawing your stoplight on there. If you get home and you forget what fanboy stands for, look at your notability. It's on there. Here's the tricky part about number five, or part five. Part five has three things. Before, we were saying, oh, it could be a run-on, or it could be a commas flies. What's the other thing it can be on part five? It can be okay. a comma fanboy. Oh, wait, no. Okay. It can be okay. Mm -hmm. So some of them, oh my, <gasps> some of them are fine the way they are. Ah. Oh. Some of them are not fine, and you have to decide if it's not fine, is it a run on or is it a comma splice? And you have to fix it using one of your methods. It doesn't matter to me, but yes, you will lose points if you do not capitalize after your period. Oh my god. Because I don't know that you know that then. Yes, you will lose points if it's okay and you try to fix it and it doesn't work anymore. 
choices. So you have to decide. Some of them are okay. <laughs> Some of them are okay the way they yeah, are. But this, is this, does this agree? one agree? They yes. Have <gasps> so, as you do it, you need to check. Is it a sentence on this side? Is it a sentence on this side? If it is, make sure it has one of these between it. If it is a sentence on both sides and it doesn't have one of those, you have to tell me, run on, comma, splice, and then fix it so that it has one of those. You may begin. This is due tomorrow. This is your homework.